Today on Will Bake for Food, I'm going to show you how to make these chocolate citrus almond cookies. Only food for me. Food, food, food. Welcome back to Will Bake for Food. We all have that one friend with crazy dietary restrictions. This past summer when I was taking cookies to every opera rehearsal, there were a couple of girls that couldn't even eat the cookies that I was bringing them because they keep gluten free. So I tried dozens of recipes and I finally found one cookie recipe that is so good that you don't even have to tell people that it's a gluten free cookie. <laughs> you can find a full list of instructions and a full set of ingredients on my Will Bake for Food blog. Now, let's get started. The first thing that we have to do is separate our eggs so that your egg whites can come to room temperature. You can get all your other stuff together while that's happening. Preheat your oven to 300 degrees or 275 fan. The next thing that we need to do is get our dry ingredients together. Now, when I was testing this recipe, I'm not gonna lie, almond flour is a little expensive, but it was such a payoff that it was worth the investment. Okay, so I went and bought a big bag of almond flour at Sam's and I was able to, you know, try over and over and over again. So the first thing I've done is I, I weighed it out, but you can really just measure it. It's two cups of almond flour and I have sifted it um, just to get any lumps out or anything like that into this bowl. This is not like necessarily a low calorie cookie, but <laughs> so one cup of granulated sugar. However, I have reserved three tablespoons out for my meringue. We'll talk about that in a second. Put this in. It's a little humid here in the Midwest, so I'm gonna sift this as well. Get these together. All right, the next ingredient I have for my dry ingredients is, this sounds very weird, but it is two ounces of dark 100% cocoa Baker's chocolate. So um, I've grated this with a large grater, and I'm just gonna put this in here. I tried this part with um, just baking cocoa and it was too fine. You needed something a little bit more substantial which is why I like to grade the chocolate or grate the chocolate I should say. Next ingredient just for a little bit of spice is some cinnamon. Three quarters of a teaspoon of cinnamon. Notice I'm mixing all as I go along. Now here is, this is kind of a wet ingredient but we're putting it in the dry mixture because we can't put it in the meringue or deflate it. So anyway, so <laughs> this is the rind zested of one orange or the zest of one orange I should say. And um, I have little uh, clementines or cuties so I use two just so that I have enough. It ends up being about two teaspoons of that. So put that in. And the reason why I've mixed everything as I go along is because once this gets in there, this starts to get a little sticky. So you want to make sure that you've got everything incorporated really well. That's all of our dry ingredients. Let's set that aside and start on our meringue. I've got three large egg whites that's going into my bowl here. Okay. And I'm just going to give this a little whiz to get it started to get foamy about 10 or 15 seconds, but you can see that there's some foam developing here. Take your whisk off. And the next thing that I like to do is actually sift in some cream of tartar. Now I found out that cream of tartar holds in moisture quite a bit, <laughs> even in, you know, the kitchen. So an airtight container, I should say. So I'm going to sift this in and we're going to whiz this until it gets to soft peaks. That takes about a minute or so. So it's not quite a soft peak, but we do have a bunch of foam. And if you pull it up, it almost ribbons off of the whisk. So now it's time to start incorporating our sugar. Now I can't dump all this in there or it won't do the right things to dissolve. So we're going to go a little bit at a time. Make sure it's on a high speed. All right, so it's been about 30 seconds or so, and you can see that we're starting to get a soft peak, right? But that's very, very soft. So we need to get a hard peak out of this. So about two more minutes on eight or 10. So it's been about two minutes more, and this is my tell is if it holds in the whisk like that, it's a hard peak. Okay, now we have to put a little bit of flavoring in here. I'm gonna put a teaspoon of vanilla extract and then just whisk that in, I don't know, about 30 seconds or so. All right, see, it holds in the whisk both ways. Mary Berry would get none on her head. <laughs> so now we mix in our dry ingredients. And <laughs> this is nowhere near as cantankerous as a macaron, for sure. And that's one thing I like about them, <laughs> because they are very simple to do. Mm, I don't know, about a third of this in here, just to get it started. And cut down the middle around the outside. 
All right, I'm gonna finish incorporating this and then I'll show you what our dough looks like when we're ready to ball it up. We're on the final stretch before we put them into the oven. I have a small cookie scoop here. You could use a teaspoon if you wanted to. So I like to just put them on the tray like so and then I'll do the whole rest of it but I like to put this in my hand and it's stiff enough dough that you can do this put it into my hand I roll it up in a nice ball on top of each individual cookie I like to put just a little almond and then kind of press it in and press it down I'll get all the rest of these done. I'm gonna stick them in the oven for about 25 minutes. The way I like to do is put both pans in and then rotate halfway through. So I'm gonna say 12 and turn. So these ended up being in the oven for about 26 minutes. I tried to lift them up a little bit and they were still a little bit sticking to the parchment paper. So um, I left them in there for about another minute. <clears throat> but look how much they have puffed up and there's just a little bit of brown right in the center on the bottom. The next thing that I do is I let them sit on the pan on a cooling rack like this for about three minutes just so that they can set really well on the pan before we remove them and let them cool completely. The best, best part about these gluten-free cookies is that they literally last for seven to 10 days in an airtight container. So if you're in a busy holiday season, you can make them way in advance and you're golden. This is what we call our chocolate citrus almond cookies. Thank you so much for watching We'll Bake for Food. Only food for me.